Hi, and welcome back for another week of Content Conversations. I'm really excited this week to introduce you all to Rick Rose. Hi, Rick. Hey, Dan. It's so good to see you. Last time I saw you was here in Madison when we were talking about the projects we're working on. Yes, that's right. That was pre-COVID days. That seems like a nice long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> sure um, was. Yeah. Good to see you. I don't know why when I say your name, Rick Rose, I have to always go Rick Rose. It's just that name that like has that effect on, <laughs> on me. I think you're right. Um, when I was born, just as a side, my mom said, someone said, it's Ricky Rose on the drums. When I was born, they thought I was going to be a drummer just because that name Rick Rose, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to share your work um, with our community here. Um, I'll quick give a little bio about Rick. So he is um, special projects, um, but the creator of the some of the series we'll be talking about today, and I think has a lot of different roles with Discover Media Works. Um, Rick is based out of Wisconsin, as am I, so we kind of have a Wisconsin connection for you all today. Um, and this content is available on Infobase's products. Um, and resources. So um, Learn360 for our educational market, and then also our access video on demand, which is our public library market. So if any of our subscribers are here today and Learn360 and access video on demand or, or access video on demand customers, just know you can log in today and check out these awesome new series that we'll be talking about. If you're not, go to infobase.com and sign up for a free trial so you can check them out. Um, so Rick, let's dive into a little bit, maybe just about you for a moment. How did you get started or interested in producing video? Yeah, it's very interesting. I just have the comment. It's so cool that originally it was just producing video. And now, 33 years later into my career, it's conversations like this, like how we can distribute it more than just like sending out a, a DVD or a VHS or whatever, you know, like we're available to everyone everywhere, which is awesome. So thank you all for considering uh, what we do. And to answer your question, Anne, it was about 32 years ago, my father actually started our company called Discover Media Works. We're now in the third generation of a company. Um, and it started really here in Wisconsin, like you referenced. My dad was guiding Governor Thompson before he was actually governor and, and said, hey, if you get elected, I'd like to come talk to you about doing a fishing series. And the governor said, why don't we do a series on tourism? So back then it was a 50-50 partnership. We raised half the dollars as private sector of the state of Wisconsin tourism gave 50% to kick it off. And we started as a tourism show. Uh, we have done over 500 episodes of Discover Wisconsin and that's how it all started. And I came on board um, probably 10 years into that. And at that time we kicked off into the outdoors. So I had massive theater experience. I worked in California for Warner Brothers and Lorimar and it was time to come home to Wisconsin and contribute what I could to telling stories of about the great outdoors and um, in that case kids environmental work well that's that's a great history that's awesome it and is. into the outdoors um can you tell those of you that are those of us that are are here today with you a little bit more about that series yeah sure i'm i'm super proud of this series you mentioned COVID earlier and i know you're a mom we, we have a, a mutual friend who connected us who's a a recent mom of her second child hey sarah so um to me <laughs> when into Hey, Sarah, to me, went into the outdoors was created. Um, the goal was actually we were approached again by a Department of Natural Resources, and they said, we're having an issue 20 years ago, kids being predominantly on their computers and what's turned out to be now, you know, like all of you are struggling with managing screen time. And we'd like to get kids into the outdoors. And I said, well, let's keep that aim into the outdoors and let's use those tools to get kids into the outdoors. So the setup of Into the Outdoors is still the same as it was 20 years ago. It's a kid's adventure team where they pose questions to each other and they go out and investigate those critical questions to discover things about science and agriculture, about the environment, about sustainability and all those important topics, but using things like this to communicate to each other. So it's, it's very, very exciting, whether it's um, waste management and how, how what, what is a landfill to um, we just recently are launching a program about elk uh, being reintroduced to the Midwest and how that ties in with the Native American experience. So the series are great. Now I'm going to say one last thing, uh, referring back to COVID and you guys being moms, we found as of March 17th, an influx in people going online to watch us. Um, and we found working with you, your people, 
your uh, partners and clients have picked it up because it is an awesome resource. And we're there to help parents and teachers do the good work they have to do today that they didn't expect was gonna be part of their job description, right? I, and, and it's amazing, the series for y'all, one of the lines that really sticks with me, um, and I had to write it down to make sure I get it right, get it right but it was said, the series is aimed at getting kids to want to go outside and explore, discover, and understand the natural world about them. So for those kids that already are going outside and love nature, I mean, which obviously I, you know, I think is a lot of our kids, but we might have entered the world even more recently where we didn't have those natural introductions for kids. They weren't going on field trips, maybe, maybe where they live. It's not, you're not able to, right? We're not able to, able to hike to the zoo or what have you. And so I love that this series gives that to kids too. And it does encourage them to find interest in the natural world around them. So it is amazing. And something that I've seen always do well, and this series does it perfectly, is kids teaching kids. They connect when the hosts are kids, they listen, right? It's just, they, those series always do fantastic. And this series has that on the mark, it's so great. Um, and then I also love that it's described as, you know, teaching the science behind it, with a little bit of craziness and laughter. So it's fun, it's yeah. engaging, it's it's a fantastic series. Um, geared really at that kind of middle school age range, but you know, can definitely sway a little younger or higher. Um, the most popular series, and I don't know if I shared this with you, Rick, Rick, I was looking at this prior to today. The most popular series, and you actually hit on it a second ago, is the series on becoming a steward waste resource management. Oh, really? That's, That's cool. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah, okay. far and beyond. And can you talk a little bit maybe about that program uh, in yeah. case people are interested in checking it out? Oh, for sure. What I love about what you're saying, Anne, is like if we look at 20 years of kids getting out and doing adventures, when we originally were writing and it was more things like what is a sand crane or, you know, what is the life of, a, a, you know, a bird series, a, you know, species or whatever. But now kids you know, we look at Gen Z and below, right? So your point, we're kind of targeting the seven to 12 year olds, but because it is kids kid, teaching kids, they want to learn from a 19 year old. They also want to answer the questions for a four year old, like, hey, little Johnny, here's come and come and learn with me. And it's fun to see kids connect that way. But in our case, we're finding that the majority of these kids care and they hear stories every day about um, our planet. They hear stories about the harms of plastic. They they're concerned that we're gonna run out of water. They're concerned about uh, climate, you know, like we're in the middle of presidential you know, debate time and they hear these serious subjects and they wanna make a difference because they know someone like myself, we're on the way out, I am, I'm not gonna speak for you, but these kids are our future generation. And so in this particular episode, and it's really delightful to hear that I'm gonna share back, we traveled to different places and learned about how robots are a part of recycling. What is the recycling process? What can I do? What is composting? You know, we make it practical to a kid. What's also fun is when we do interview adults, we have the kids doing the interviewing and they ask questions, you know, kids are from the mouth of babes. They ask questions that really make us as adults think about what it is we do. Because sometimes we routinely, routinely do those things and don't really realize how impactful that, you know, those efforts can be. I, I love it. And, you know, in, in looking at that particular program, there was um, some good lines in there that stuck with me even as a viewer, as an adult viewer um, is, and it kind of resonates to a lot of other concepts in sustainability of like, where does your food come from? Right. Where, it was, where does your garbage go, right? We put it on the, on the curb or we bring it there and you're done. You, you think it just disappears and it's gone. And um, that's kind of mentioned in the program of like, let's understand, right? Like, the less we put into landfills, the less we put on our landfills and we can't just keep allocating more land to them. And so it was really interesting, even as an adult, I'll say, right. I, I found myself really keying in. I'm like, you're right. I, I do kind of put it at the curb and, you know, we put our recyclables out as well. So it was, it was a really great program. And I can imagine a lot of teachers would find that really useful in their science classes or in, in their environmental science classes. And I think especially in the world where students are doing a lot more remote um, learning, that this would be a program that a teacher could assign to a student on a topic and they would really enjoy watching. And I would guess might even click on more series or titles in your series because it's I think really you fun. hit on it on the head, you know, like in the case, we really do work with teachers and people to develop the curriculum. So the entire series is about, let's say, 25 minutes in length in your catalog. 
But with that, we also, through your catalog, make the curriculum pieces, which are four pieces equal one show available, and they go deeper into those concepts. And those curriculum pieces on our website, if people look back to it, have downloadable uh, worksheets that kids can use in class, um, links to other resources. So not only our producers who are our storytellers who are working with the kids' talent, like you said, we also have actual teachers on board and educators that help us make sure we hit the core curriculum things that are out there. I think that's critical now for moms and dads that are homeschooling that, that aren't credentialed or don't understand that concept because they're not trained to be a teacher, that this, we assure you, stamp of approval is going to meet those uh, various things. I honestly love your smile about this series because, you know, having created it years ago, I, I, I really don't stop to think of the impact on it and how we can, um, how a teacher can be part of passing that on. One last thing, and you mentioned adults watching. When we look at it on, you know, sometimes we're on broadcast or PBS, and when those shows go out there that way, 51% of our audience is actually adults. And I think part of that <laughs> is because they're watching over the kids' shoulders. I can't tell you countless time I go on a shoot and they're like, oh my God, my son Johnny doesn't know I'm watching over his shoulder and I'm learning from it too. Um, and we try to keep it simple. I'm not complex about science. If you can break it down, I love that. You know, then I sound a little smarter when I go out for a glass of wine or, uh, you know, a tea with one of my friends. I love it. And I had to work the wine in there. I had to work the wine in there. I'm going to die. Uh, so, no, I love it. And um, and I love that your mission is to help those teachers. Um, I mean, most of, you know, we, we work in the educational space. And I've said it before, you know, our producers and our eyes are these, you know, they work magic and the, the passion that you all have for the content you create is amazing. But, you know, let's be honest, these aren't Warner Brother budgets. And so the passion is what drives a lot of these. And so that's why I just, you know, you guys are rock stars in my eyes and in so many. And I just love to share the work you're doing with our community because teachers have a lot on their plate. Um, you know, all of our all of our educators do. And the more that we can kind of try to help explain this content to them. So, you know, next time they're talking about this, it might be an easier search for them. So I love it. Um, the series Into the Outdoors, I will include a link. Um, I feel like I always wanted to do this. Like that's a yeah, social media. You're doing click it. Below. I'm helping you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, click below. I'm going to include it after the event is over and I'll make sure I include a link for all of our um, subscribers. And like I said, I'll also include a link for Infobase or you can go to infobase.com and that's where you can find access for our, our um, our free trial access so you can log in and see if this is a great resource that would work for your school. Um, so we have two other series that we have from Discover Media Works that I want to touch on as well. Um, Boondock Nation and Discover Wisconsin. So Discover Wisconsin, although this sounds like we're quite Wisconsin centric here, is a really amazing series that touches on a lot of points um, using the location of Wisconsin to lead that. And then a quick bio on Boondock Nations is a really unique series um, on adventure snowmobiling. So these are both in our public library product, Access Video On Demand. So if your public library subscribes to Access Video On Demand, you have these two awesome series available to you. Um, and I'll just kind of give you a little bit of an idea. So, and, and, and Rick is going to do this so much more masterfully than I am. But, oh, no, no, um, no. I love you being our spokesperson here. I really do. <laughs> I do, I love it. <laughs> you're a good guy. Well, it's just that I love it. So the Discover Wisconsin series, um, I mean, you're going to be shocked here, people, but there's a lot about cheese making. Um, <laughs> and, it's just, and it's fun. It's a size behind it. You know, hopefully you're like me, you love cheese. And so it's fun to see, um, you know, the how that's done and kind of the impact of that or just some different, um, you know, we even have some craft beer making. So it's kind of a really fun, unique series there. And then Boondock Nations, um, this one is a really unique series because adventure snowmobiling across the US and Canada um, is, is pretty intense. I mean, if you're looking for a series that have things like um, creek bashing, um, side, okay, no, no, I can't mean, uh, Misery Creek, <laughs> um, breathing through your eyelids, I mean, gnarly, these are the death, these are the words <laughs> in this series. And um, as a mother, of sons um it's kind of that series where you look at it and you're like if they watch this this is what they're going to want to grow up to be yeah, right. um, with my daughters too yeah. i shouldn't say that my, my daughter probably would have the same reaction but um it's pretty intense uh rick you want to tell us a little bit more about these yeah definitely i'll pick up where you left off about boondock nation because of our 35 years as producers are there about this is our most recent series uh four years ago 
we love to have the series like we referenced with Into the Words. It's kids telling kids stories, and they're part of that. This storytelling is done by real guys. They happen to be gentlemen that go out and have been doing this since high school. One of them happens to be my nephew, so I can brag about Dylan. But this, this program started as a project he did for DECA in high school. And he said he lives in the northern part of the state near the UP of Michigan. He's like, hey, I want to do something and um, start a company where we can take people out doing this. Um, and his dad said, well, I have to own a TV company. Why don't we make it a TV show? And it happened. So five or six years later, he and his two friends go out to Idaho Falls, where they're based in Idaho for six months. And they go out and rip roar, like you said. They go to beautiful places. The series is done by the actual team of people that are doing the boondocking, which is really just um, going out in nature to unexplored areas and creating their own trail systems. I had the pleasure of producing an episode on Revelstoke in um, the BC. And I'm telling you just the imagery of this series. I mean, it's great when they talk about blue bird, bird skies and gnarly and all that, but what's really cool is the imagery. And I think the secondary viewers of this show I know is gentlemen like myself that are 65 or women that just haven't had a chance because they've been raising their families and want to get out and rip roar. Again, that audience, when you talk about public libraries, this is beautiful images, guys. Anytime I share the link to this program, people are like, that is absolutely beautiful. You will feel the cold on your face when you watch this series. I, I agree. Um, I did also, and I mean, I, I, I felt my age when I had to Google what it meant to breathe through your eyelids. So um, yeah, it, it, but you're absolutely right. You're watching this and inside you're like, oh my gosh, like that's, I could, I should do that. Like, it's so <laughs> exciting to watch yet. I know I couldn't, but it's real. it's really cool. So, um, you know, if you're looking for more of an adventure series, this oh, is a sure. really fun, there's 12, there's 12 programs in the series. Um, and, and it's really, really fun. So uh, and there's lifestyle right attached here. to it too. You know, like you talk about the yeah. West, you know, this is, this is the background of this series guys is Jackson hole and all these other places that people travel around the world to come and witness in Wyoming and Buffalo's. We did an episode at Yellowstone. Only so many people can snowmobile that a year. Um, and we got to see a Buffalo come up to the snowmobile guys. So there's some really cool stuff like you mentioned there. And um, it is an action adventure series, but you will learn things. And I will say on the serious side, we teach avalanche safety. We're not going to get out there and be irresponsible. We did, we've done, we weave avalanche safety into every episode. So if you are going to be like Ann and learn to go do this, we will teach you how to do it. And the second thing, we did a very special documentary as part of this last year about land rights and land use and using, you know, share, you know, there's people that like motorized activities and there's people like myself that like silent activities. There are equestrians. And so we talk a lot about how we as people living in the Wild West can can all enjoy something differently, but it's still the same resource. Now I'm gonna jump on Discover Wisconsin because it's my heart and soul. And I love what you said about it. You know, Wisconsin, of course, you and I love it. We live here. You're connected to the dairy industry. I'm connected to the angling industry. My dad was a pro professional fisherman, but it's just the backdrop guys. You know, we do so many cool things here that are process oriented. And I think when you talk about public educators and just people that wanna watch something, we find so often people wanna see the process behind things whether that's making wine or brewing beer. A um, lot of food and in, in, um, food and beverage on this episode, of course, on these episodes, because of course it's that. And these are, you know, these aren't just specific to Wisconsin. They're dropped against the, the you know, the back rock of Wisconsin, so to speak. Or, I mean, come on, flat tire racing, the American Birkebiner. And then we look at what Wisconsin has that's nationally recognized, right? We have one of the best curling teams. We have the Birkenbiner, which I mentioned. We are the national headquarters for speed skating for the Olympics. Um, the state fair in Wisconsin, you can't beat it. One of the best state fairs, the farmer's market, you know? Um, and the joy I get in all three of these episodes, I think the through line that any of you that have, you know, give us that opportunity to watch this program is the great outdoors. Now, to be serious, we don't know how long this COVID thing is gonna last. But whatever it is, we've opened up our eyes, like you said, Ann, to being outdoors and enjoying outdoor activity as much as we can. And our series are based on the outdoors. Every one of these really promotes the outdoors. So I think that's why we're seeing an uptick and people enjoying our content. I love it. And I think you've hit it on the head, right? So um, this has been 
Awesome. Rick, every time I talk to you, I'm even more excited about your content because look at this passion this man has. I mean, imagine how much he pours his heart and soul into this stuff, you guys. So check it out. You're going to love it. If you've never thought you liked snowmobiling before, I'm just going to say check that series out for I sure. I agree with you. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it, I found myself um, feeling that way. <laughs> like, wow, here's something I really, and I'm from Wisconsin, people snowmobile through my backyard and I have never got on a snowmobile in my life and now I'm like ooh, adventure snowmobiling what have I been missing out on um, but you know just to recap um, we talk about into the outdoors it's such a great science series it really expands so many different topics I know we just touched on a couple ones with the waste resource management but um, gosh, I mean, there's, there's so many, there's, um, 30, 39 episodes in that series. Yep. So a yep. lot to lead you through. If and you're 13 more coming, just so you know, by January, we'll have 13 more new ones. <sighs> okay. Is there one that you kind of want to want to want to lead us, give us what's the one that you're most excited about that you produced from your, I think, stuff? uh, this coming season is just the one that's just getting, um, uh, kids introduced to the great lakes of what, you know, the great lakes and just learning about Lake Michigan and, uh, all that good stuff through, and we do it through the U.S. Coast Guard. They're a part of that series. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. Okay, yeah. very cool. Great Lakes, that's an important, uh, it touches a lot of things, science, geography. Absolutely. Um, oh, that will be exciting. Sorry to put you on the spot there, but. Oh, no, no worries. <laughs> Note to self, call Rick in December. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so we have the Into the Outdoors. Again, that's more of our curriculum. Discover Wisconsin and Boondock Nation for our public library patients. Check them out. I'm going to put the links below. Um, and uh, and I'll just say thank you, Rick. And I really, every time I speak with you, uh, I never leave without a smile on my face. Your energy is just infectious and the content you produce is, is amazing. So thank you so, so much for the work you do. Thanks, and it's a pleasure to work with InfoBase, and I speak on behalf of, a, I'm just the face of an entire team that are equally passionate, and you would love every one of those people as well. Thank you so much, and thank you all for joining us. All right, bye-bye. Bye, guys.